how how do you measure autophagy? I mean, how do I know whether I am having enough or yeah. not? Yeah, so unfortunately, we, we have advanced a lot in measuring autophagy in animals, and we can do it in different ways, like genetics. Um, we still have a big pending part on how are we going to do it in humans. And that has become actually, uh, there is an urgency to do this, because people are starting to do clinical trials with some autophagy activators. So you have to make sure you are engaging your autophagy. So, so far, the best work that I have found is one of our collaborators, Fernando Macian, also at Einstein, that he's using blood cells to measure autophagy, but it has to be only particular cell types. So basically you take a blood sample and you're gonna have a mix of cells in your blood, but most of them are short living. So they are not really telling you much about the individual and the age and autophagy but you have some cells that are called T cells that are memory cells. So some of them have been with you since you were like two years old, right? Because they have to remember that virus that you got in contact or that bacteria. So those ones have age with you. So he has the ability to separate those ones and to measure autophagy on those ones specifically. And when we have done it in animals, we see that autophagy on those particular blood cells correlates very well with the autophagy that you have in most of the organs in that particular age, in that particular animal. So I think that's gonna be a good surrogate for the time being. And then the other thing, there is a lot of interest in looking for biomarkers of autophagy. So now that we have animals where we can increase autophagy, decrease autophagy, we can take the, the blood or the CSF of these animals and then look what metabolites are there. What is the signature of enhanced autophagy or what is the signature of decreased autophagy. But those are still ongoing studies. A lot of metabolomics and proteomics and all these big omics in blood trying to figure out if at the end you could have just like a simple test in the lab or in the clinic that say, okay, yeah, your level of autophagy is such and such because it correlates what we, we see in the mm -hmm. mouse models that we can really measure it accurate. And then the third, Type. So the first one is the cells that I think that's ongoing and it's very exciting. The second one will be measure something, some metabolite in blood. And then the third one, and that is a lot of interest now, but nothing really out there yet, will be to use imaging. The same way that you take a PET scan or a, any kind of a scan of your body. Hopefully we found some fluorophore or some component that is degraded by autophagy that you can inject in the patient then you can image the person, but that's still not there. That has been done for abnormal proteins. There are very good probes now for abnormal proteins to measure Alzheimer or to measure Parkinson, but we still cannot uh, do that for autophagy. But that's where the field is, is heading. There is really terrific biophysics and many chemists involved in developing those probes. So hopefully um, in our lifetime, we will have that. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Interesting. So, but uh, autophagy, like you say, I mean, it's changing with time as, you know, so uh, would you like have to take autophagy over a period and, and average it to get? Yeah. So, so the way that I, I compare it is the same way that when you go to do your insulin testing. So normally you do the fasting insulin and the postprandial insulin, right? Like you, you go one right. day, you have it in normal conditions, and then the other day they tell you don't have breakfast and came for the test. So I think autophagy might have to end being something similar. And what would be really great now that we talk so much about personalized medicine or precision mm -hmm. medicine is the more longitudinal studies we can do with large amount of population, the better. Because then we will understand if there are different optimal levels of autophagy and which parameters on that particular person they relate to. Are they related to your body mass? Are they related to your level of activity? Because I think the most important is gonna see how autophagy in that person changes with the time. And if you do interventions, whether or not you are bringing it to whatever was the normal levels for that person. So I hope the future precision medicine kit will have an autophagy marker at least. Right. Yes, interesting. So, and that kind of brings me to my next question, which is, uh, so can you do too much autophagy? Because you said you want to get it right. 
And also, yeah. it's especially for old people, right? Older people. So we have sarcopenia we need to worry about. So we, we want, I need to keep building muscle to make up for the loss. So how does, aut how would autophagy kind of fit with that? Yeah, so, so, so one thing is that the way that autophagy is designed, um, it, it puts the break even before reaching maximal activation. So if everything works okay, it's almost impossible to really damage more than you should. But, you know, when talking about the different types of autophagy, there are some examples that this macro autophagy, the one that you trap things inside this bag, can go a bit too far. And there are some diseases that are related to that. So there is some level of caution on how are we going to modulate. And that's why I'm so interested in understanding what are the optimal levels of autophagy at the individual level for this particular person, what will be idea. But having said that, in the case of chaperone-mediated autophagy, it's a bit safer. Because if you remember the mechanism, you have a chaperone that identify a protein, and then it brings it to the lysosomes. Mm. So by enhancing the activity of the lysosomes, you will still not degrade anything that has not been primed for degradation. So if the chaperone doesn't identify that this protein needs to be degraded, it will never go to this lysosome. So it doesn't matter if the lysosome now is working very well, if it's not reaching the lysosome, then you will not destroy it. So the reason why we think in aging, we have some successful interventions where we enhance chaperone-mediated autophagy in aging, and it's extremely beneficial for those animals, is because your poor chaperone were there hanging around with this protein and the lysosomes are not ready. So of course they are like, okay, I need to really degrade this, but this is not ready. So as soon as we increase lysosomal function, it's like, sure, I have all these customers that I have to do great, but it will not touch anything that has not been primed for this degradation. So that's kind of a very important safety mechanism that, you know, now that we are developing drugs and hopefully starting clinical trials at some point, we wanted to make sure that this is gonna be safe. And so far it points out that it's quite safe. But then you also bring out this interesting idea of sarcopenia and muscle. So, so even in that context, the, the whole idea is that you maintain your mass. I mean, it sounds like autophagy is gonna degrade your mass. It's gonna degrade it based on the energetic requirements. So you will activate autophagy when you exercise, but at the same time, you are building mass when you exercise. So it's the perfect balance between anabolis and catabolis, like building and destruction. And in order to build mass, you need autophagy because you need to take like these amino acids that are coming out of autophagy to build mass. So it's just a matter of, you know, coordinating your interventions for autophagy with exercise. So you will have mass building instead of mass loss. That is a big fear, of course. Right. So you just need to eat your protein. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. <music>